Hey, hey guys, uh, I just got my new antique map hooked up. Things are going a little crazy. I'm going a little crazy. Um, this is my uh, vintage map of Southeast Asia that I found uh, at an antique mall this week. But, you know, I've been just going nuts um, researching um, this book that I'm working on. I'm working on a book uh, about a medical missionary named Dr. Eric Jalamar East. And um, so as a result, I've been doing a lot of crazy research that I would not normally be doing. Um, and I've been studying steamships. Okay, so wait, now I gotta go back over the map because I wanna talk about that. Um, when you're studying the story of Dr. East, here they are on the Bay of Bengal in the Indian Ocean here. And there's a lot of this. There's a lot of, uh, you know, traveling up around the world that goes on um, back to the United States. There's a lot of travel. And this travel is taking place aboard steamships. And so for the book... I wanted very much so to understand this. Now, Dr. East was uh, from Sweden, and he um, as a young boy left Sweden and uh, went he became a blacksmith. He, he apprenticed as a blacksmith, and he went out into the North Atlantic and it was actually on a ship working as a fireman or a person that shovels the coal in there and works in the boiler room. And, uh, and he did, he did some other jobs there. Okay. He was a fireman and in the boiler room of steamships, they got shipwrecked. It's, uh, it's neat. But anyway, he ends up coming to America working for the railroad uh, in Kansas and in Portland, Oregon, and it's a whole big thing. It's a great story, but a lot of the story, you know, after he he comes to Christ and he um, goes to medical school in Kentucky and in New York, but then eventually he gets on a steamship there in New York Harbor, goes to England, you know, goes down under, goes he, you know, through. The, the past the rock the rock of Gibraltar through the Straits of Gibraltar through the Mediterranean uh, through the Suez Canal into the Red Sea <laughs> through the Bay of Bengal you know what I'm saying like it's it, a lot of steam travel okay and so I've been studying a lot and uh, I'm going to throw on the very end of this video um, something I learned that was just kind of by the way in it if you're into history you want to check it out check it out um, but. I learned about the worst maritime disaster. I was studying steam travel and steamboats and, and tragedies, and, and I was looking into the Lusitania. So just hold that little mark, the Lusitania, and the Titanic. This, this time where Dr. East lived, he was born in 1866, and he's on the mission field between about 1902 to 1910. Um, and so... And, and he lived to 1939. So, but a lot of his mission work that that, that is in the uh, that's right there at the turn of the century, um, and in the first part of it, right before World War One, uh, he's doing a lot of steam travel. Some of the some of the neatest parts of the story have to do uh, with the traveling and you know where he was and all that kind of stuff. His story ends actually as 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 it is ending as he's leaving the country. He gets on a boat uh, in Yangon and he's leaving port, and he's been given the care of this twenty year old boy from Muncie, Indiana, who was the son of an oil uh, oil rig operator down there in Yangon, and the boy has got a fever and he kind of flips out. He jumps off the boat. And he is, uh, they're, they're trying to save him from his own delirium. And they, as they get the boats lowered and they get close to him, uh, he, uh, a giant shark comes out of the water and eats him and pulls him under the water. And the, uh, one of the, the sailors who there sees his hat floating and reaches down to pick up his hat. 
after he picks up the hat and he sits down in his boat, uh, a shark leaps out of the water and almost eats him. Um, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, if this were a movie, which maybe one day it will be, this is this will be one of the dramatic scenes, and he's of course on a steam powered vessel here as well. Um, but as I was studying this, I wanted to know about the boats. I want to know what they look like. I want to know, you know, and I knew he had experience in, 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 uh, working on steamships and being in them. So I knew if he's traveling around the world like this, he's going to be in these ships. Okay. So, I, so b back to the thing I'm going to tag on the end here. And then I'm going to tell you a couple cool things about that. I'm learning for this book. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever had the chance to be in the mind or be a part of, a book being written, but it looks like that's what my mind's going to be on. I may not have time to do some of the other things I've been doing, and I may just jump on here and get all excited and tell you about that. Uh, the stuff I'm working on, if you want to watch it, great. If you don't, that's okay. But this is what I got to do. I get, I get down in the rabbit hole, and my mind gets on all these different things. So anyway, I, but I just had to tell you, because so part of the story, uh, when he is in... Uh, Rangoon, which is nowadays called Yangon, uh, he just mentions in his diaries that he went out on a boat and he had a uh, dinner at a state dinner with the viceroy. The viceroy is like, you know, the, uh, the governor general of all of India. And he doesn't really make much about it, but, but so I wanted to know who this guy was and, you know, all about him. And so I learned about it. The guy's name was, uh, Lord Minto, M-I-N-T-O. He was a Scottish Lord, uh, whose grandfather, uh, had been the 15th Viceroy of India. And so, you know, it skipped his father and then him. Uh, and there's about a, he, you know, about a hundred year difference really in when, the, when they served. So Lord Minto of Scotland had been the, also the governor general of uh, Canada and he was into a bunch of stuff. Anyway, I, did, I found all about this guy and his wife and his wife, Lady Minto, uh, has diaries and thank God for the internet. I mean, the things you can find researching, but she has, she's describing their time in Yangon. I found a speech that he gave uh, right on the very day that Dr. East uh, was on the on board, and, and so he probably heard uh, the speech. And anyway, pretty exciting. Uh, so I'm just making discovery after discovery. One of the other discoveries I made, and I'll get back to the steamship stuff, and then I'll try to wrap this up, and then and I'll tag on something that has to do with connecting to Columbus and steamboats and steamships and disasters. Uh, and we'll get to the Lusitania if you just hang out with me just a second. So, uh, and I know my last video was also about a ship disaster, uh, talking about Horatio Spafford's wife, uh, who was involved in a horrible maritime disaster, uh, and lots of people died, and, and uh, including four of Horatio Spafford's daughters. So, yeah, that that's part of the research I discovered uh, these things in, in all this. All right. So hopefully I'm not completely too insane for you to follow me, but, but just, just try to stay with me. And if, if it doesn't work out that you can, well, Hey, I guess I'll survive it, but all right. So, um, I also, he, there was a, there's mention in his diaries that he wrote an article that was widely circulated around about how to cure goiters. Goiters, it's, it's a large lump down here on your thyroid gland, okay, or and it proceeds from a problem with the thyroid gland and a deficiency of iodine, okay? In fact, it's just for those of you, you know, if you buy salt and it says iodinized salt, you may not know uh, that they put iodine in salt to prevent goiters. If you have a lack of iodine, you will grow a growth on your neck called a goiter. Um, and so I'm, I'm, being a little oversimplified here on this medical stuff, but the goiters are a huge problem in Myanmar. And uh, people that live near the coastal areas eat fish. They get a lot of iodine from that, but people that live in the mountains oftentimes will get goiters because they lack of it. So years ago, they put 
iodine in the salt because salt, everybody uses salt everywhere. And the iodine that's in the salt uh, solved this problem in America and other parts of the world. But they hadn't really figured that out yet uh, back in the time when Dr. East was in Burma. Uh, at that time, they just referred to the whole area as India uh, and sometimes as Burma. Um, and, and so anyway, he found a way to completely reduce a goiter to nothing in one treatment. And he wrote a paper about it and he mentions this in his diaries, but <laughs> it was hard to find. And I thought, how hard could it find? He said, he said it was in a medical journal. He said it was in America. So I looked and looked, I couldn't find it. And after like 15 months of trying five times and giving up on it, I found the article. And uh, so I'm very, very excited about that. And he explains his treatment and how it worked and why he thinks it worked. And, and so that's going to make a great addition to the book. He doesn't discuss all that in the diary. He just mentions his, uh, his actual grandson actually mentions the fact that there was an article. And uh, so anyway, found the article. So that was awesome. So anyway, this was the time of steam travel, okay? So we had the sinking of the Titanic that's in this kind of time period, the time period of the life of Dr. East. We had the sinking of the Lusitania. Uh, and so one of the things when you're a researcher, you know, I'm every boat he's on, I'm getting the name of this boat because I'm thinking what, you know, what if something great or fantastic happened on one of these boats or one of the captains or whatever. And this was my thinking. And so I've been a little crazy about the boats and the steam captains and, and I've been looking up history and my family thinks I'm crazy. But today it paid off and that's why I'm making this video because I just can't believe it. So when Dr. East is on his way home in uh, December and January of 1910 and 1911 respectively because he starts off December the 10th, uh, 1910, leaving Yangon uh, and he then goes, and it takes him a long time, of course, and, and it, it becomes uh, <laughs> the uh, January of uh, 1911. Anyway, so I am trying to find out what ship he was on, and I found out that he traveled from um, from the United Kingdom to New York City on the Cunard Line, and the Cunard Line was, uh, one of the ships in it was the RMS Mauritania. And as I wanted to learn about it, and I wanted to learn about the captain, I, I, I discovered that the captain of the ship, when he was on it, is a man by the name of, drumroll, 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 Captain William Thomas. Okay. William Thomas Turner. Okay. So William Thomas Turner was the captain of the ship in the sinking of the Lusitania. He was captaining it when the Germans hit it with a, a torpedo and, and sunk it. And, uh, you know, nearly 1,200 people lost their lives. So Dr. East happens to be on the Mauritania, and the Mauritania is the sister ship which was built after the more, after the uh, Lusitania. And uh, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, a little bit nicer. Um, but while he's in there, the Lusitania is still fine. And he's on the Mauritania. And this captain, uh, William Thomas Turner, is on it. And later in his life, he's going to be the captain. On, on it. Now, he survives um, the sinking of the Lusitania and ends up being falsely accused of doing all manner of bad things, and it pretty much wrecks his life, uh, even though he does survive it. Uh, anyway, you can watch documentaries about that. There's plenty of them. It's good stuff. Uh, so I was really excited about that, honestly. And uh, so that's going to make it in the book. And I'm going to uh, tag on to this video, A Connection to Columbus, Ohio. Um, so you learn about these horrible maritime disasters and the, this maritime disaster I'm getting ready to tell you about, um, was on a steamship, but it wasn't in the ocean. 
it was on a river. And the name of the boat, as you're going to see, is called the Sultana. And it is connected to the city I live in and a story uh, that has to do with the worst uh, maritime disaster in history, in American history, uh, where 1,800 people perished. Uh, it's a very sad story, but it connects to Columbus. And I went to some historic places in town and uh, I did a little filming just for fun. It may be random. It may be crazy. You may enjoy it as well. I'll put some links in the description of this video so you can learn more about the Sultana. Uh, I'll put some stuff in here about uh, William Thomas Turner, the Lusitania, uh, the RMS, maybe the RMS Mauritania, the sister ship of the Lusitania. Anyway, hey guys, pray for me as I continue to work my way through uh, writing the book, It Is Life to Be of Service, the story of Eric Jalamar East uh, among the Chin people of Burma. All right, so... All right, I'm going to show you these videos, and in the end, maybe I'll do a little wrap-up. All right, bye. I'm a bit of a history nut, and uh, it's early Saturday morning, and I went to meet someone in downtown Columbus. And I had recently seen a documentary about one of the worst maritime disasters ever, uh, and I had never heard about it. It was a... Uh, a ship that was carrying prisoners. There were union prisoners that had been released at the end of the Civil War. And I didn't know anything about it, but hundreds of them ended up, there was a boiler that exploded on the ship and, um, and <laughs> caught fire and they people were burned alive and they were drowned it was horrible these guys were emaciated and uh they were unable to swim they were so tired they had been in confinement uh down south and they were they were getting released and so they had just kind of received this great news the war's over we're getting released but they get on this ship and i'll i'll stick here in the video uh the name of the ship. I was trying to study something about steamships for a book I'm working on. But I'm, I'm here in downtown Columbus. You might know what I'm doing and I'm not showing you right now. There's, um, there's a stone behind me, but I did not realize in that documentary, they explained that in, in a place in Columbus, Ohio, there's a place called Camp Chase. And it is actually a Confederate cemetery. And the reason this connects to Columbus is they were bringing them from the prison camp in Vicksburg up the Mississippi, and their final destination was going to be Columbus, Ohio. So here they are uh, in Vicksburg. They think the war is over for them, and uh, they... Get on the Sultana. Here's a picture of it under steam, crowded with these passengers. They were only supposed to hold 300 to 400 passengers, and there are more like 2,500 passengers. All of these soldiers loaded on here, crammed in here, jammed in there together. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, kaboom, a boiler explodes, causing other boilers to explode everything catches on fire the thing is burning they run to the side where the wind isn't blowing the stern wheel falls off it turns and then the flames go the other direction everyone it's horrible uh it's a terrible disaster i'd never heard of this i've lived in columbus all of my life i had no earthly idea about it but it says there are two thousand 260 Confederate soldiers of the war of 1861 to 1865 buried in this enclosure. And what I found out is that uh, there was a camp here where they, they had prisoners of war uh, from the South. 
And so anyway, I heard about this place and I heard that it still existed, that it was still here. I had no clue about it, but I wanted to, uh, I just wanted to film it. And um, it's right here on Sullivan Avenue. Very, very unlikely place. Uh, they even have a cannonball. The Confederate cannonball fired at the Battle of Vicksburg. For some reason, they have it up here. So, pretty neat and interesting. Thought it would be worth sharing. I love history. Uh, fortunately, this wasn't locked. And, uh, but yeah, here on Sullivan Avenue here in Columbus, Ohio, at Camp Chase. And I'll read this for you. And then I'll uh, throw in some pictures and get a little... Uh, history behind it. it says Camp Chase was a Civil War camp established in May 1861 on a land leased by the United States government. Four miles west of Columbus, the main entrance was at, on the National Road. Boundaries of the camp were present-day Broad Street North, Hague Avenue East, Sullivan Avenue to the south, and near Westgate Avenue. Named for the former Ohio Governor and Lincoln's Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Solomon P. Chase. It was a training camp for Ohio soldiers, a parole camp to muster outpost, and a prisoner of war camp. As many as 150,000 Union soldiers and 25,000 Confederate prisoners passed through the gates from 1861 to 1865. By February 1865, over 9,400 men were held at the prison. More than 2,000 Confederates are buried here. So there's more to it. I'll post it. Uh, in the description, but it's a beautiful day here in Ohio, and uh, history marches on, and uh, so do I. I hope you found that as interesting as I did. Um, the uh, exercise of research and study and discovery uh, of history and putting together a story that will speak to people, and what I really hope people are going to get out of the story I'm writing about Dr. East is that uh, there are those who give their lives unreservedly to Christ and they go and they preach the gospel. And those people that sow seeds, blessed are the feet of those people because they bring the seeds that God turns into faith and uh, he you know, uh, changes lives through marred vessels like us, through people that really have no right uh, to anything good, but God has been kind and he's allowed us to not only have an inheritance in heaven, but to be a part of people coming to Christ here on earth. So I love you. And uh, thank you for keeping up with me and what I'm doing. I hope you enjoy uh, my rambling fun video today. Bye.